welcome to my channel. My name is Samantha. I'm a stage four breast cancer survivor. A little while ago, I had a poll up on my channel and asked what you guys wanted a video about. At first, one of the other choices was winning, so I made that video, but then this video idea started pulling ahead. And so I promised I would make this video too. So today I'm gonna to be talking about what chemo feels like. And I'm also gonna be making chocolate chip cookies because last time I made something while talking about stuff, you guys really liked the format of that video. So I'm gonna do it again. So I'm gonna start this video off super basic and I just want to explain that I, it's not because I think you're stupid, it's because I myself did not understand these things before I started chemo. So first thing, there's a ton of different types of chemotherapy. It's not just like, oh, you're diagnosed with cancer, here's chemotherapy. There's all kinds of different types for all kinds of different types of cancer and just a ton of different treatment options. So not every chemo is the same and not every chemo affects every person in the same way. So for my breast cancer treatment, I had two different types of chemo. Well, I guess it's kind of three different types. I had AC chemo, which is adriamycin and cytoxin. And then after I did four rounds of that, I had rounds of Taxol chemotherapy. Adriamycin is the one that's like bright red. It's nicknamed Red Double. A lot of people who have breast cancer get that type. This is really mainly gonna be about my experience, but just know that you know symptoms can be worse or better or just completely different. So before I had cancer, I thought of chemo in a completely different way, mainly because I just didn't understand it. I knew it was some kind of medication, but I didn't really understand how the medication was given. And it was kind of like this mysterious thing that like I never thought that I would ever have to worry about, or at least I didn't think I would have to worry about so young. I kind of thought back to what I saw of cancer uh, treatment in TV shows and movies. And in that, I think, the thing that would stick out in my mind is like the big machines and like bodies going through the big machines and so I think what I was thinking chemo was was really what radiation is and I have a few other videos on radiation but uh, it's not the same thing and if you want me to make a video about what radiation feels like then let me know but like you know anything where a person is laying down on a table and you know, they're like, all right, stay still so we can like shoot stuff at you. Like that's radiation, that's not chemo. And then anything where you're going through like a big machine and there's like lights and stuff, that's probably just like an MRI or a PET scan, not treatment. They're just scanning you to see like where the cancer is. Those are the things that just like look really dramatic. So they're gonna use that in television or movies, but it's not really the most dramatic thing in real life kind of. I mean, radiation's pretty scary. You're sitting there and then you know that there's like physics involved where they have to calculate exactly where they're going to shoot the radiation at you. And if it's off, then, then it can hit your heart and you can die. And you know, it's scary, but that's not really the most dramatic part because it's not like painful or anything. So how is chemo actually given? It can be given in different ways. So Sometimes you can have oral chemo, which is just like a pill that you take. Those are usually less aggressive forms of chemo. You don't usually have as many side effects from that. And then um, IV chemo, which, which is given through an IV in your arm. Most people know what an IV is. You know, if you've ever like gotten sick and you've needed fluids or if you've ever had any kind of surgery or anything, you've probably gotten an IV before. Usually how an IV is given is they stick a little needle into your arm and it has a little tube that you can attach things to it and medicine can go through the tube into the vein into your arm. It's not like a regular IV where you're getting fluids because chemo can be really hard on your veins, especially my type of chemo, which is why it was recommended for me to get a port instead of just have um, the IV inserted into my arm every single time I got chemo. You know, you're essentially putting poison into your body. Um, this is like dangerous, dangerous medication sometimes. I have a video about my port and the surgery and how it went. Basically, I still have a scar from it. I don't know if you can see right here. Um, they make an incision right here and also like up a little higher. That scar has mainly healed so you can't really see that as much. They put the port inside. I'll, I'll show a picture of what a port looks like because it's kind of confusing. Um, and they attach like the ends of the port to like the bigger veins in your body. 
so that you can access those bigger veins that can handle chemo a lot better than the small veins in your arm. And so basically to access the port, you have like this circle thingy just inside your skin right here. And it's a little bit uncomfortable, especially when you're wearing a seatbelt across it. But basically, um, whenever they wanna give you the chemo, they'll take this huge needle thingy and they'll stick it into the circle part. And it looks like it's, it would be really painful, but it actually isn't super painful because it's like right under the skin. So you feel the prick of it like going through your skin, but it's not like it's piercing through your body or anything like that. Um, the only time that happens is if they miss and they get it off to the side and then it's very, very painful, but hopefully that doesn't ever happen to you. <laughs> they can take blood from your port too because, you know, it's connected to the vein, so yeah. And then they have to flush out your port every once in a while with saline to like make sure it's all clean and stuff. And then they can also give you chemo through it. Let me keep doing things because I got distracted. I need a teaspoon of salt. Okay, so let's talk about when chemo is given. It really depends on the person and their treatment plan. So for me with AC chemo, I had it every other week. Um, that chemo would, you know, lower my white blood counts. And in order for them to be able to give me more in a safe way, they had to wait for those blood counts to rise back up again before it was okay to give me more. And taxol chemotherapy, I had a lower dose of, so I had that every single week, but some people, have Taxol every four weeks or every other week and they just get different doses of it and it's all just dependent on your specific treatment plan and what's right for you. When I was getting AC chemo and Taxol, I had what's called outpatient chemo, which basically means that I can go into the hospital, get the chemo and leave on the same day. I would go in for AC chemo and I would be there for about five hours just to have the appointment with my oncologist to get my blood drawn and to check the counts and then to actually get the chemo and all the pre-meds before the chemo and all that. And I'll talk about a little bit of that in a second. Some people have what's called inpatient chemo and that's when you go into the hospital and you are basically admitted. So you're getting chemo over and then you're staying in the hospital for a few nights. That really just depends on the person and the type of treatment and the type of chemo. So sometimes, you know, like if you're a child and you might not handle the chemo well. Um, they keep you in just because of that. If you have like an increased risk of a severe reaction to the chemo, they might wanna keep you. Or if you just have a more aggressive type of chemotherapy in general, combine flour, baking soda, and salt. So like I was saying, um, when it takes five hours, you get pre-meds before chemo. Pre-meds are basically things that help you with the chemo. So I would usually get a steroid, which would just like help my body like function after I got chemo. And also um, nausea medicine, lots of different nausea medicines. And sometimes I, with Taxol in particular, I would get allergy medicine. I got IV Benadryl. And if you've never had IV Benadryl, it hits way different than regular pill Benadryl um, because it goes straight into your veins and it's like way stronger. <laughs> you know how Benadryl kind of makes you a little drowsy? Well, IV Benadryl makes you very drowsy, but also what it did was it would make my legs restless. And so I could not, I couldn't sleep because it felt like I needed to get up and like move around. It was pretty uncomfortable, but it wasn't the worst thing in the world. So now that I've explained all of that, I still have not explained what chemo actually feels like. Sometimes you can feel it going in, especially if it's going in the smaller veins in your arm. Just you can feel like something cold, like going up your arm. Um, but that's just the same with any kind of IV. Like if you're getting any kind of fluids, you could be able to feel that. Some people say that they can taste it. Same thing that can happen with saline also. So it's not that exciting. <laughs> um, I definitely felt like a little bit of a cold sensation because, you know, I get cold very easily. And so, you know, when the medicine's going into my body, I can tell because it's like going up through my veins and it kind of makes me a little chilly. It shouldn't hurt or sting unless there is something wrong. So if it's not going directly into your vein, it could start to sting. Then you would obviously tell your nurse about that and then they would fix it. So usually how chemo is given is they, have like a little IV bag that sits on top like the little machine and it like 
flows down through the tube and it goes uh, uh, and it like gives you the medication up through your arm or through your port or however you're getting the medication. But with adriamycin specifically, they don't do that because it's so, so dangerous. The doctors are wearing all this protective equipment and I'm just sitting there not wearing anything protective and it's actually going into my body, but whatever. That makes, that's the thing that makes it scary. Um, they basically just use syringes to give you adriamycin because they have to constantly check and make sure you're getting blood return because if that doesn't go in to your veins correctly, it can cause like severe burns, it can cause cancer. All chemo can basically cause cancer. I mean, yeah. So it's kind of intimidating, it's kind of scary, serious stuff. But other than that, it's not really like painful or anything while it's going in. You could feel nauseous while you're getting chemo, especially after you've already had chemo because you're probably gonna be nauseous in general from the last chemo. And also just being in a hospital made me feel gross because, I don't know, you're hooked up to all this stuff. The smell of like the alcohol wipes, it's supposed to, like people say, it's supposed to make you not nauseous, but I think I've just had that smell too many times and it just makes me nauseous because it makes me feel like I'm gonna be getting chemo. You're just kind of feeling generally gross while you're hooked up to these machines and like this gross, these gross chemicals are going into your body. So sometimes you feel a little nauseous while you're getting it, but that's not going to be the worst of your nausea. Softening my butter. Okay, so I would get chemo on a Friday usually, and then on Friday and Saturday, I would kind of just feel tired, a little bit nauseous, and kind of just gross. But on Sunday, that's when everything was horrible. I felt super nauseous. Um, I was so tired. I have, I have a video actually about my symptoms with AC chemo that I go into depth a little bit more, but basically I felt like I was in a dream state. Everything was just super, super hazy. And it's like a fatigue that I had never experienced and probably won't ever experience again. I was still taking steroids for a few days after getting chemo and it was still that much fatigue. So it's really insane what that stuff does to you. And it's so much better than it used to be because they have so many more medications now. Um, they have so many better nausea meds, allergy meds, um, steroids that they can give you that help you through chemo a lot more. So in general, people feel less nauseous than they used to back in the days of when chemo first started, but it's still pretty bad. <laughs> and another thing is that some people can feel other things while they're getting chemo. So for me, um, whenever I would get cytoxin, it would do this really weird thing um, where it would cause my nose to burn and then it would like travel up and it would feel like my brain was burning. It was just like this really weird sensation that apparently happens to some people. And I don't know if other types of chemo have different kinds of side effects like that or anyone else has experienced this. And the very first time that they gave it to me, they tried to give it to me over 30 minutes because that's just the standard amount of time. Um, but my nose and my head were hurting so much that they you know, slowed it down for me because I guess that helps. Um, and then after that, I always got it over an hour worth of time instead of over 30 minutes. And still even getting it over an hour in the last like 10, 15 minutes or so, that's when my nose would start to burn and stuff. And it was so weird, such a weird feeling, but that happened. Like the process of actually just getting the chemo isn't as dramatic as it seems like it should be. Um, it's really the stuff afterwards that is the dramatic part and is the part that's really uncomfortable and annoying. So I can talk a little bit more about the side effects that I've experienced. Like I said at the beginning, there's tons of different types of chemo that have different side effects. And even if you have the same type of chemo as someone else, your side effects could be different than another person's. So first side effect, I think I mentioned already, lower white blood counts. You are more susceptible to diseases. You're technically immunocompromised, um, stuff like that. That's why like cancer patients um, take extra precautions when they're like going places. I went on a plane the day after I got my first chemo and I got pretty sick on my way back. Um, I was just like sick with like just a random cold and I ended up needing to go to the hospital and get fluids pumped into me because like I was just so sick. In general, cancer patients are supposed to go to the ER if they have a 
temperature over 100.4. There were a couple times I had a fever during treatment. There was one time I had to go to the ER because it was like not during business hours, you know? Obviously, nausea, that's a big symptom. I never threw up, but I tend to not throw up when I get nauseous, which is good and also bad because a lot of times people say they feel better after they throw up and I just can't, so I just continue feeling nauseous. But also, I don't have to go through the pain of throwing up. Chemo is probably like the worst nausea I've experienced. Um, but I never threw up on it, except for, well, I guess that was targeted therapy and not chemotherapy, but one time I threw up on Easter, um, after eating lamb chops and I, I still can't eat lamb chops. <laughs> like I said, mind numbing fatigue, fatigue like you've never experienced before. Really, really, really awful fatigue. Heightened sense of smell. That is a big one. My clothes started smelling really bad. Even after they had been in the wash, I could like smell the sweat on them. And I wear those same clothes now. I have absolutely no issue with them. Don't smell it. Don't know what I was talking about while I was on chemo. And no one else could smell it. But while I was on chemo, I couldn't wear like any older clothes. I bought a bunch of new clothes and I like, went through those and since they were sort of new, like washing them and stuff was still fine. Air fresheners, like anything like that was just way more intense than normal. Like I would, I was staying at my parents' house a lot of the time. Um, they were helping take care of me and stuff. I would just like go around the house and just unplug all of like the little plug-in air fresheners. Some people have a big problem with flowers, which is funny because like one of the first things you think about getting a cancer patient is flowers. I mean, different things can set different people off. Foods that you used to like, uh, you could hate. Yeah, it's just weird. Another side effect is loss of taste, which I thought was very interesting because my smell was so heightened, heightened but I could not taste anything. And so basically everything that I ate kind of tasted watered down. Some people also get a metallic taste in their mouth where their like food tastes like metal. Dry skin, that's another super common side effect. Um, it was super annoying to have really dry skin because it was so sensitive. But the other thing that it did is just cleared up my skin. Like my acne has never been better. It cleared up my face. It was actually great for that but it did make everything kind of dry and it was a little, a little annoying. Um, hair loss, obviously, depending on the type of chemo, you can have more or less hair loss or none at all. Um, the type that I was on, adriamycin, like AC chemo, is really aggressive on your hair. So you just kind of have to come to terms with, you're gonna lose your hair. <laughs> um, let's see, bone aches. Oh yeah, that was super annoying. Like some of the most painful pain um, when it gets really bad. Um, I would feel it in my hips a lot is usually where I would feel it. And like my legs. It was not comfortable. Um, brittle nails. Oh my gosh, that was super annoying. My nails would break so easily, especially on Taxol chemotherapy. My toenails cracked twice, like both of them and it took forever to heal because they also take way longer to grow because it's kind of like your hair. Nosebleeds, yeah. I had a lot of nosebleeds on Taxol and you can get nosebleeds for having a low platelet count, which is pretty bad and they like want to make sure that that doesn't happen. But I really just got nosebleeds because my nose was so dry um, because everything was dry. Like basically everything dries up on chemo. It's your eyes, your nose skin, everything. Your mouth too, gosh. You, then you get mouth sores. Mouth sores is another common thing. I don't even know if I put that on here. I didn't put that on there, but that's also a really common symptom. Hot flashes. Um, a lot of times your periods stop when you're on chemo. And if you're not already like past like menopause or whatever, um, hot flashes can get really bad. Light sensitivity. Oh my gosh, whenever I'd walk outside, like it felt like I was blind. <laughs> and hot and cold sensitivity was another thing. Um, that is a permanent symptom that I still have. 
So first I noticed it with my fingers and my toes. Um, if I hold like a really cold drink, just basically if I took a soda out of like the refrigerator and held it for, you know, more than 15 seconds, I would have to put it down. And then I started noticing it with my teeth. Um, if I would drink something really hot or drink or eat something cold, like ice cream, um, it would just be sensitive on my teeth. And it also like causes brain freezes, like way more often than I've ever had brain freezes. They're way more painful than they've ever been when I get a brain freeze. So like, I kind of have to like learn how to eat so that I don't get them. And then I started noticing it with my ears. And that's just a symptom that I got during Taxol that has not gone away. Neuropathy was another thing that I had during Taxol. Um, just pain in your fingers and your toes. And that did go away for me fully. Some people have that permanently. We did stop my Taxol treatment early. I think I didn't get my last three Taxol treatments um, because they didn't want the neuropathy to get too bad. Brain fog is a side effect that a lot of people complain about. They just like complain that they can't remember things. Yeah, Q, I hear you. Why don't you come downstairs? I had a little bit of it, but really my main problem was the fatigue. Definitely my least favorite symptoms, symptom on chemo. It's just how out of it I felt all the time. And there's probably a ton of other symptoms that I'm forgetting. So if you have any others, leave them down below. What was your least favorite symptom from chemo? So there you have it. That's what chemo feels like. Basically, it sucks, um, but you gotta get through it. And a lot of times it really helps. It really helped me a lot. It shrunk down my cancer, um, got rid of it in some places and shrunk it in others. And then it was easy for me to, you know, have the lumpectomy um, out of my breast that took out the bulk of my cancer. It shrunk down the cancer on my ribs, so it was way easier to give me targeted radiation there. I knew exactly where to shoot the radiation, stuff like that. Here she is. People were asking in my last video if she came to Alaska with us. And she did. She's here. So sorry about the meowing in the background, but if you have any other questions, please leave them down below. I like to answer them in the comments, especially right after the video is posted. Please subscribe to support me and my channel. If you're interested in vlogs, other things about my life, I have another vlog channel with my husband. Check that out if you're interested. And yeah, that's all, bye. Here are our cookies before we're gonna put them into the oven. Here's what they look like when they came out of the oven. They look good.